Here in America, 300 years ago, the oceans washed the edges of a continent almost untouched by man. The seas rolled in on sand or broke on rocks that formed the threshold of a land on which great forests stood. Forests of oak and pine and fir, of chestnut and spruce and hickory. Forests that stretched a thousand miles to where the prairie started. The prairie of knee-high grass that rolled another thousand miles. A thousand waving, sun-drenched miles to where the mountains rose. Range after timbered range, with fertile valleys in between. Until, at last, the land sloped down into another sea. Between her two oceans, the land held everything man could need. Besides timber and grass, there was the bright water of quiet lakes and the clean water of running streams. There was wildlife enough to last until the end of time. Millions of bison and antelope roamed the plains, and in the forests were deer and moose and bear. Bighorn sheep lived in the mountains. Beaver abounded in the streams. And ducks and geese swarmed in the marshes. Deep in the earth were oil and coal, copper and lead and zinc. Iron and all the other metals with which to build a great industrial nation. And there was gold in the sands of western streams. But most priceless of all was the good, rich soil that if handled with wisdom and skill would produce fabulous crops for years to come. 300 years ago, there was but a handful of human beings on the continent. A few hundred thousand Indians who pitched their teepees deep in the forest or built their dwellings high in the canyon cliffs. But then the white men came 